Singer's book The Expanding Circle is an all-time classic in ethics. According to Singer, ethics is inescapable. We simply cannot help classifying actions as right or wrong, and we need ethical standards. Religion used to provide this standard, but is no longer as universally accepted as it once was. Also, locating the origins of morality in God reveals the so-called problem of evil. Is killing wrong because God says so? Or does God have reasons for killing to be wrong? Singer believes that if God has reasons, perhaps the basis of ethics must be sought outside religion and belief in God. Human beings are social animals, and we were social before we were human. This may sound odd to some, but makes sense in the light of evolutionary theory, where humans evolved from humanoids with rich social lives. In the book's first chapter, Singer tries to get at the origins of altruism, defined as behavior which benefits others at some cost to oneself. He believes that our present ethical system has its roots in the altruistic behavior of early humans. Also, humans are not the only species with altruistic behavior. Birds, for example, have warning calls, which reveals the whereabouts of the bird giving the warning. Furthermore, Many animals protect offspring with considerable risk to themselves. Some animals share food, giving up calories that could have benefited themselves. Kin altruism and reciprocal altruism can be explained in terms of natural selection. Remember evolution is about the survival of genes, not individuals or the species. When we help kin, we help genes identical to genes in us to survive. When we help non-kin, we may benefit from their help later. The Prisoner's Dilemma, an example from game theory, shows that we are sometimes better off if we are not self-interested and choose to cooperate instead. For example, in the long run humans that cooperate during hunting are more likely to succeed if they fight off predators together instead of bailing on each other. According to Singer, kin altruism came first, then reciprocal and group altruism. The example from game theory shows that two self-interested people might promote their interests more poorly than if they were more altruistic and conscientious. Looking out for number one means you may be on your own in a critical situation. The fact that less self-interested people may do better allows for altruism to evolve naturally. Chapter 2. The Biological Basis of Ethics According to Singer, Every human society has some code of behavior for its members. Even in Auschwitz, there were ethical codes amongst the prisoners. Stealing from other prisoners was strongly reviled and punished by the prisoners themselves. We have reasons to believe that the core of ethics runs deep in our species. Many social reformers have dreamed of making humans prioritize community over family. Plato advocated it and the kibbutz movement began by strongly condemning the family, but in the end had to come to terms with it. We appear to have an inbuilt tendency to prioritize family over community. While kinship is an important part of who we are, reciprocity is almost universal as well. The duty to repay benefits, like grooming, is the beginning of justice. Singer makes a small adjustment to his definition of altruism to reflect the fact that our everyday use of the term includes the importance of motivation. Thus, altruism is behavior which benefits others at some cost to oneself and is motivated by the desire to benefit others. In the third chapter, Singer tries to clarify and assess some of Edward Wilson's claims about human ethics. For example, Wilson suggests that scientific findings may be relevant to ethics by producing better knowledge about the consequences of our actions and they might undermine existing ethical beliefs by giving us a better understanding of what is natural for human beings, for example by enlightening our traditional understanding of human sexuality. Singer declares himself a consequentialist, which means that well-grounded biological theories, insofar as they are relevant to ethical decisions, should be taken into account. To ignore biology is to ignore one possible source of knowledge relevant to ethical decisions. Singer agrees with 18th century philosopher Hume that there really is an unbridgeable gulf between facts and values. Contrary to what Sam Harris believes, 
facts are neutral about what we ought to do and cannot provide us with reason to action. Ethical principles therefore cannot be found in our biological nature. Even though our values and ethical systems are the products of our evolved nature, we cannot find our ethical premises there. We have to choose ethical premises ourselves, but they may have a rational component, as we'll find out in the next chapter. The fourth chapter is all about reason. Beginning to reason is like stepping onto an escalator that leads upwards and out of sight, says Singer. Reasoning is inherently expansionist. It seeks universal application. To be ethical, a decision must give equal weight to the interests of all affected by it. It requires us to strive for an impartial point of view. Singer defends the view that consequences matter. If moral rules are not to be recommended to the group on the grounds of their good consequences for the group, on what basis are they recommended? Singer believes that ethics evolved out of our social instincts and our capacity to reason, and the principle of equal consideration of interests. Shifting from a disinterested ethics within a group to a truly universal ethics is a big challenge. But this is where the escalator of reason comes in. If we ask why the interests of my society are more important than the interests of your society, and the only answer we have is that it's my society, then our reasoning will lead us to reject it. Reason helps us to see that other families, other groups, and other societies are equally deserving of ethical consideration. Where does this process end? Well, according to Singer, the only justifiable stopping place for the expansion of altruism is the point at which all beings able to feel pleasure or pain are included. The expansion of the moral circle must therefore be pushed out to include most animals. Chapter 5. Reasons and Genes All actions can be interpreted as selfish. Someone donating blood can be said only to do so to be seen as good. However, sociobiology provides a good reason for rejecting so-called psychological egoism. Genes coding for strictly selfish behavior are less likely to survive. Altruism, in other words, is consistent with the theory of evolution as we saw earlier. Once reason plays a role in ethics, says Singer, it's not surprising that outstanding thinkers of different traditions and cultures should arrive at a similar golden rule, like don't do unto others what you would not like them to do unto you. Singer believes that Hume is not entirely right when he says that reason is a slave of the passions. According to Singer, reason can be its own motivating force in getting rid of e.g. cognitive dissonance that is, having thoughts, beliefs, or actions that are inconsistent with each other. Even if the strength of the desire to avoid inconsistency varies from individual to individual. With Singer's approach, ethics loses some of its mystery. The premises of ethics come from our own nature as social reasoning creatures. Emphasizing the rational element in ethical choice narrows the gap between facts and values even if we cannot fully derive ethical principles from our biology. The rational component of ethics is our ability to adopt an objective point of view. Very few people, however, are able to live up to the highest standards of this approach. Here's a hypothetical example. A building is burning. In one room is your child. In the other room, the two children of your neighbor. You can save only your own children or your neighbor's children but not all children. We've learned from Singer that my is irrelevant in ethical decisions, but most people, I say, will save their own child in this example, even if, from an objective point of view, you should save as many children as you can. If we have a tendency to favor kin, this should not be ignored when we try to get at a rational ethical code. According to Singer, even though the viewpoint of an impartial spectator is the ultimate criterion on what is right, we should not make this the sole practical criterion of our ethical principles. And ethics for normal human beings will do well to place realistic demands on us. The goal of maximizing the welfare of all may be better achieved if we accept our inclinations. That was Nonfiction Takeaway from The Expanding Circle. Singer talks about many other things in the book. 
If you are at all interested in ethics, this is one book you should add to your reading list. More non-fiction takeaway to come, please support the channel by liking, sharing, subscribing and using the affiliate links below the video. You may also want to follow my Twitter account.